Hi everyone, in this example we're going to build a cost of goods manufactured schedule as well as an income statement for Star Apparel Incorporated. So Star Apparel's accounting staff has gone together and ga gathered all of the necessary information that the company needs to prepare these two documents. They have their direct materials, whip and finished goods in inventory at both the beginning and the end of the period. In addition, they have the amount of direct materials that were purchased, the amount of expense they paid for direct labor, the amount of expense they paid for indirect labor, the amount they had for plant insurance, the amount of depreciation that was recorded for equipment and property and plant associated with production. Uh, they have plant utilities, they have repairs and maintenance on the plant. They also have some research and development costs, designing and building new products and some general and administrative costs. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna record our cost of goods manufactured schedule. And here I have a template for Star Apparel's schedule of cost of goods manufactured. First thing that we are going to need is to figure out what our direct material costs are. Well, what does direct materials always start with? It starts with beginning direct materials inventory as of the first day of the year, which in this case is gonna be 1120. And how much was that? Well, we can get that from our information. So let's just hit equals, go on over to our information page, and we see that our beginning direct materials at the beginning of 2020 was 65,000. We need to add to that any additions we had of direct materials during the period. So let's add in our purchases of direct materials to that number. And again, that number is listed on our information, so we're gonna go back to our information page. We're going to grab the amount of direct materials purchases that we had, which was 205,000. Well, if we add these two numbers together, 65,000 plus 205,000, we get 270,000. We started with 65,000, we added another 205,000, which means throughout the period we had $270,000 worth of direct materials available to be used. But we didn't use them all, so what do we have to do? We have to subtract out our ending direct materials inventory on the last day of the period, which was 1231.20. Our information tells us, we go back one more time, the ending direct materials inventory was 70,000. So we could have used 270,000, but we didn't, because we still have 70,000 left, which means that our amount of direct materials actually used during the period is equal to the difference between those two numbers, which is 200,000. Next up, we have our direct manufacturing labor cost. That number is given to us in our information, so we're going to go swing over there, and we're going to find that, and we're going to see that we spent $160,000 on direct manufacturing labor during the period. Now we have all of our indirects, and for our indirects, if it's going to go on the schedule cost, it is manufactured, it has to be associated with production. So let's go back and look at the line items we have on our information. We're going to start here with indirect manufacturing labor. Is that associated with manufacturing? Well, yeah, it's indirect manufacturing labor. Plant insurance. we got to have insurance on our plant or we can't operate it, so that's got to be an indirect cost of production. This depreciation is on PP&E, plant property and equipment. Let's assume that it's associated with production. And then we have plant utilities and plant repairs and maintenance. Again, you got to pay your utilities if you want to produce goods and you have to repair and maintain your equipment and your plants to do so. So that's going to count for the direct costs of, or the indirect costs, excuse me, of production. The other two items we have, research and development. Yes, you need to do that kind of stuff to, you know, be in business, to have exciting new products, but it's not directly linked to production. The same people that are doing research and development aren't making the goods that you're gonna sell, they're designing new goods that you wanna sell in the future. And then general administrative, you know, things like your CEO, CFO, um, advertising, etc. Those are all necessary costs, but again, they're not directly linked to production. So the bottom two don't count as manufacturing costs. While these five in here definitely do. So we're going to fill those in on our cost of goods manufacturing schedule. The first thing that we have is our indirect manufacturing labor. And we'll total these up in the left-hand column. We'll go over here and find that off of our information. And our indirect manufacturing labor was 65000 We're going to go back. And we're going to find our plant insurance. 
Again, another necessary cost of production that can't directly be traced to a job. That was 10,000. The next indirect cost we have related to manufacturing is gonna be our depreciation of our P, P, and D. And we're gonna go and we're gonna find that on our information page. And that was 25,000. After that, we have our plant utilities and how much we paid for our plant utilities was 20,000 and then lastly our last indirect cost related to manufacturing is our plant repairs and maintenance and that is going to be equal to this ten thousand dollars we have down here well when we add that all up and the number auto filled there but I'll do it here our total Indirect manufacturing costs are equal to the sum of those five numbers, 130,000. Therefore, our total manufacturing cost is equal to the sum of our three cost components. This $200,000 for materials, $160,000 for manufacturing labor, and $130,000 for all of our indirect manufacturing costs. In total, we spent $490,000 manufacturing goods during the period. Well, let's add to that. Our beginning whip inventory again listed on our information is a hundred and ten thousand which means we have to account for not only what we added during the period but the cost that we had in inventory that we were working on when the period began four hundred and ninety thousand plus a hundred and ten thousand means we have six hundred thousand dollars worth of manufacturing cost to account for but all those costs didn't go into goods that were finished being manufactured, which is what we're going to need to transfer over to figure out our costs of goods sold because it's got to be finished before we sell it. So we're going to subtract out our ending whip. And we go to our information, our ending whip was 100 grand, which means that our cost of goods manufactured is going to be equal to 500,000, the difference between those two numbers. And with that, our COGM schedule, if you will is done which means we can go on to our income statement and in our income statement it's given that star apparel did nine hundred and sixty five thousand dollars worth of revenues well we got to figure out our gross margin which means we got to figure out what our cost of goods sold was first so we're going to start with our beginning finished goods inventory on the first day of the year which was one one twenty and that number is given in the information placed in the left hand column and that was 140,000. Well, we're gonna add to that our additions, inventory that we finished making during the year. In other words, inventory that we finished manufacturing. So let's add to that our cost of goods manufactured. And our cost of goods manufactured is the final number on our schedule of cost of goods manufactured. Which means if we started the year with $140,000 worth of inventory, and we added $500,000 during the year, the cost of goods available for sale during the period is equal to the sum of those two numbers, which is $640,000. But we didn't sell all of it, and we're only looking for cost of goods sold. So what do we gotta do? We gotta subtract out our ending finished goods inventory as of the last day of the year, which is 12-31-20 and that is going to be equal to the number given in our information as 125,000 which means if we had $640,000 worth of goods we could have sold but we have $125,000 left at the end of the period the cost of the goods that we actually sold has to be equal to the difference between those two numbers which is 515,000 then we have a gross margin. A gross margin is simply revenues minus cost of goods sold. $450,000 was the profit that we made just from marking up our goods. But we have other costs that we have to subtract out. They are the costs that we can't inventory, that we can't include in our cost of goods manufactured because they're not directly related to production. The first one being research and development costs. So if we go to our information, we find that we had $75,000 in R&D costs, and then we also had 
our G&A costs, our general and administrative costs. And that number, also given in the information, is 175,000, which is non-inventoriable. So in total, we had $75,000 plus 175,000. $250,000 worth of operating costs, things necessary for operations that couldn't be inventory because they're not directly related to production, which means our operating income is going to be our gross margin, the amount of profit we had left over after we accounted for the cost of production, minus our other costs. $200,000 was the operating income for Star Apparel Incorporated for the year ended December 31st, 2020.